Hello, Sachiko. We're here today with the wonderful artist, Sachiko Oshima. Sachiko is Japanese and she's lived all over the world. We met in Chicago where we were working on a really lovely environmental project, which actually has informed this show, Energy. Sachiko is now um, a full-time artist and she's selling her work globally. And she is, or she has created an extraordinarily beautiful piece for the show, Energy. It's great to see you here today. Hello. Hi. 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 Um, so Sachiko, I'd love you to share with everyone who's going to see this and hear this, um, your story about how you ended up becoming an artist. Okay. Well, um, actually, when I was a child, I was never an artist. Like if uh, you ask my mother, she will laugh about it because really I couldn't draw. And on the other hand, my sister had an artistic eyes, so she could draw and, you know, make an amazing art. So, you know, people who know me from a young age, they are surprised what I'm doing now. And but I think uh, I liked making things from young age. Um, I started baking and cooking um, from probably 10 years old. And my greatest teacher was my grandmother and my mother, and we were cooking a lot. And I think my art journey really started from that, that time because you experiment and you test and fail and you actually <clears throat> make people happy about what you create. So I think my route starts from the cooking. And, uh, and then um, I, I did a lot of um, creative lessons I, I learned. Um, I did a kebana, a Japanese flower arrangement, and also tea ceremony and interior design. And uh, yeah, so uh, all these lessons uh, were all connected to here I am. And when I lived in Chicago, uh, we had a big house and you know, American houses are big and the wall was empty and I didn't know what to do with it. And in that time, um, my friends asked me if I wanted to take an abstract art class. It was really a six um, times short course um, about the New York school, um, famous um, abstract artists um, kind of technique and who they were. It was just a short course to learn about technique and who they were. And I liked it, but I never thought that I would really continue doing this. I thought it was kind of like one off lesson. But then, um, then that's the time um, I took the brush for the first time and I really enjoyed it. And then I came back home and say, well, actually I have a space and uh, why don't I create something if I don't, you know, if I cannot find anything um, to buy, why don't you make for myself? And I started um, painting in the kitchen and then that's how I started. And uh, I hung my paintings and people started coming and asking what it is. What it is. And then, um, yeah, so that's how I started. I love that. And also, yeah, touching on your cooking, because I mean, we can't, we have to talk about this. You're a sublime cook. Um, as is your daughter, you've got two daughters and one of your daughters um, is just exceptional. You make food into an art form. So actually that does make sense to me that that precise way that you look at things and create beauty on the plate would then translate into art. That's I've never thought about that link. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's really, um, when you think about art, like maybe people think that, oh, you have to go to art school, you know, you have to study certain things. But, you know, the life is all about art, I think. You know, everything you do, um, it's really um, art form. Like there are so many art forms, like as you said before, uh, it, it can be dancing, writing, cooking, um, you know, all the events, um, you know, all these things. So it doesn't matter what you do. For my case, what I enjoy and felt like, oh, this is it I want to do was painting. But really, I started late. But I didn't know until age 45. Um, probably I was searching for something I can do, which I didn't know. But then I tried a few different things. It was like I was living like a hummingbird life. I was testing, liked it, moved on to something else. I liked it. It, it didn't, I, I didn't really drop them all, but I wanted to try different things. 
And uh, so now this is painting, but I think it's going to be a long term. Absolutely. And I hope it will be for everyone's sake because it's beautiful. So when you're creating a piece, let's um, let's talk it for an example about the one that you've created for the show Energy. Can you talk through your process of creating that particular piece, what you've called it, what you were thinking? And because, I mean, I really see it that you're putting your frequency, your energy into that painting. And that's why I wanted you to put your work in the show, because your work moves me. We've got some in our house and it's just people point it out. It's very uplifting. It's very soothing. I, I love the way you paint. So can you talk through your process, please? So uh, when you asked me uh, for the piece for this show, um, thank you really for having me. I'm really honored to be part of it um, because we worked together in, for the environment and anything to showcase something good for the planet. So I'm so happy that I'm part of this. Um, and anyway, you told me um, to paint something about um, paradise for me, the interpretation of my paradise or heaven. And it was really, it's, it's a big um, theme, you know, heaven can be anything, but to me, heaven is where you peace, peaceful, calm, and really uplifting. And that's when I'm usually in the nature that happens. Um, when I'm hiking or when I'm, I'm in the garden, um, that's when I feel so good and heavenly. So I, I really knew that uh, this piece will be green because green is a color that really um, keeps, keeps me calm and fresh. And uh, I wanted to bring that to your show. And uh, this is a painting behind me, I'll show you. Talk us through it. Yeah, so, um, this is abstract. I, I don't really do realistic painting. Um, I, I don't really make the obvious flowers, obvious leaves. It's just a mood I want to bring. Um, so when I'm, I was in the uh, Greek islands, uh, I saw this beautiful, beautiful garden uh, just after the sunset. And it was really peaceful. And then you can hear the birds singing. And that was the mood I wanted to remember for life. And uh, to do that, I didn't want to make it too obvious. The realistic painting, I cannot do anyway, technically. But um, so th that was the starting point of, for, for this painting. And uh, actually, there are so many layers on this canvas. When there was a white canvas, I put all the words that means to me and for the show. I put uh, what I love uh, about nature. You know, I love animals, I love green, I love uh, fresh air, water, harmony, um, love, uh, friends, all, all these loving words I put on, on this canvas first. Uh, I, I wrote in English and Japanese too, but of course you don't see it, but the intention is there. And I, I think, um, the painting has so many layers and many layers you don't see, but it, it really creates a depth. And of course I get stuck in the middle. It's not always happy and peaceful and wonderful time. Of course I get stuck. I, I lose, you know, um, kind of control. Uh, I start having doubt. What am I doing? Okay, what can I do? And something is wrong, something is bothering, but it's always a process and always go through this. And then I, take a pose, move away for a few days and come back again and then start with the fresh eyes. And then I notice what, why I was stuck for a long, long time. So th this is kind of my art process. I always go up and down, up and down. So my family knows when I had a bad day. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, so, but you know, it's, it's like life, you know, life is not, not always a straight line. Of course you get bumps, and, but then you, you learn the pain and then you learn how to react to it, how to respond to it. And it, it painting the same. Um, I noticed something was bothering because of something. It was a composition or a color combination or it, it literally like when my soul was not coming, that's usually when it's bothering. So until my soul comes out, uh, I continue doing this. And uh, yeah, so. 
uh, then I'm quite happy with this. And now I'm really relaxed and I'm very happy and proud of this piece. I love it. And it's very, very tranquil um and but luscious isn't it it's very sort of fertile and luscious and exciting at the same time as being calm i think being calm and peaceful is very important and um i, I love home uh, i like to make a good space in home and when the home is peaceful and calm it is it, you you can behave like this outside and even you know you hit summer diff difficult um first thing you do is sort out your home because that's your roots. And uh, so having something that's peaceful and something that's a reminder of your happiness uh, is very important. And uh, I'm quite happy to do this from art form like this. And I was just thinking about something, does your um, culture coming from Japan, I know you've lived in lots of places and really experienced where you live and you know, really immerse yourself in those cultures, but just what elements of being from Japan inform your art, do you think? Um, I think, um, well, as a Japanese, we appreci appreciate the seasonality. Um, we have very um, distinctive four seasons and each one doesn't last long. And a precious moment is always short, like a cherry blossoms, like really, it's beautiful. Everybody admires, and but it's very difficult to spot the right timing. It's not consistent, and uh, cherry flowers they disappear very quickly because, unfortunately, in April it does rain, and also there's a strong wind. So because of this fragile, fragile elements, um, we appreciate it and we celebrate that short life of beauty. So I, I think I inherit that um, in my art making. Um, also the fall um, tree colors, uh, it's just amazing. The red, yellow, and it, it's really, really colorful. And that, that's, that's the moment um, people appreciate. And also the food, um, there's a seasonal food and every year, uh, Every season, uh, there are different um, seasonal foods available and it doesn't last for whole year round. So really, I, I think um, we choose um, short, precious life over convenience. And I, I, like, I like this kind of philosophy because everything is um, not permanent. And, but then you then, if you understand this, you can live the moment. So uh, I want to bring the kind of like uh, nature inspired painting because nature is something we need to cherish and um, they help us. So I, I, wonder, I want to be a kind of quiet activist um, by painting. Um, I don't, you know, uh, shout and <laughs> do something crazy. I do small things, but I, I want to uh, be a reminder that each person can do something little to make a peace uh, and calm and, uh, you know, living in the nature um, through art. So I think, yeah, sorry, I keep re repeating, but um, Japanese philosophy of appreciating the moment, uh, fragile, um, short time. Um, it's something uh, meaningful for me. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I didn't know about that. And I I really like that philosophy. And I keep thinking back to something that you told me about that I didn't know. I think you said in Japan, when things are broken, they fix it and they talk about it becoming something else. Can you talk through that? Oh, that's a Kintsugi philosophy. Um, actually, you know, it, it's probably it's uh, translated in many languages and now I know, people know about this, but if I can say, it's like, um, you know, when the bowl or um, plates are broken or there's a crack, uh, we don't throw this away. We fill with uh, gold and then that will create a new form of um, art. So even the kind of mistake or uh, crack or um, some faults in item, um, 
it, the whole thing is not a garbage. Um, it, it really uh, creates a history and new beauty of art. So yes, I, I should have said that. Um, I think I, I like art making because painting is also like this. Like, you know, it, even you think, oh, this is not working, but there's always a way through. Um, you, know, you can correct it. There's no perfection um, in art making. There's always something wrong or, uh, you know, the bump. But it's really okay. It's just embracing uh, the mistakes or history of your journey, and um, so that that's a philosophy I really love um, from Kintsugi in Japan. That's that's really good. I, we should embrace that over here. And just you know, you say the convenient culture where everything's just thrown away. Imagine if we could just embrace that culture; it'd be incredible. I'm. I'm thinking also about the fact that you're now selling globally. You've got clients all over the world. You've been exhibiting in different countries. What's it like exhibiting in these different cities in different countries and meeting your clients face to face, getting new clients? How does it feel to share your art like this? Well, actually, as you know, uh, I'm an introvert and <laughs> I'm not really good at self-promoting. Um, but then actually, uh, I, you know, after I, I started showing my art to public, it wasn't, uh, you know, it was not so overwhelming uh, anymore because showing to people what I believe in and what I'm proud of is such a wonderful feeling. And when the message goes through to somebody, uh, it, it's such a wonderful feeling. And uh, I did my solo exhibition, my first one in Tokyo in last September. And uh, turnout was really wonderful. And I did this in a um, furniture company called Arflex. Uh, they, they make um, beautiful um, furniture and also they import furniture from Italy. Um, I, that location was perfect because I, I think about um, interior uh, when I create something, even though um, I don't do the commission work, I think about I'm painting for somebody, even though I don't know this person yet, um, because I want to bring some happiness and calm and peace to somebody's space. So I always think about that. And then this uh, showroom exhibition was wonderful because uh, there are so many different uh, rooms set up, the living room, dining, uh, kitchen area, um, you know, reading office, uh, library. So somehow I brought 30 pieces, but every piece had place to fit just right. Um, even though I didn't know about the space yet, but um, yeah, so people really liked that concept. And then I explained my inspiration, how I came up with this painting and really explaining about the story and um, making of this art to people was encouraging. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. So good. And when I just want to dive in to, as we're going to the end of this conversation, I've just got a few more questions. Do you feel when you're working that that you're putting some sort is there an energetic connection? Is there something that people then tell you later that they're picking up from the work that they're receiving in their room or their space? Um, yeah, so like. I'm sure like they, you know, they, they know exactly where to put my painting, even though I haven't met them, um, but they're really happy. And the comments I get is that, uh, is that uh, now um, they feel connected in the space. Uh, that's a really encouraging comment uh, for me because it, it's really great that the people, uh, you know, the feel good place has a balance of people's energy and color and texture and the balance is so important and then I can be a part of it through arts. So uh, my, my mission is to do, do this connection and uh, they feel it. And uh, so that, that's, that's what I, I get as a comment and I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, because I, I feel that in the work that we've got from you it does balance our room it just uplifts it and I look at it every day because we have a few pieces and they really um they I've got one in my bedroom and it's very tranquil to look at it and it inspires me every single morning you know, having my cup of tea 
and I look over at this painting and I feel sort of softer because I'm not an introvert and I'm not soft, but your painting helps me connect with those lovely feelings and it's really gentle and I really appreciate that in our space and we have one in our sitting room and it's very joyful and the colours just bring harmony to our space so I'm very grateful for that and again people are going to get to see this what I see is a sort of garden of Eden in our show because it represents one of the really important aspects of our show which is about living in balance on earth harmony you know, respecting Mother Earth. And I think you've put all of that into your painting and I'm excited to have it on our wall for other people to see it. So I'm gonna ask one more question. And this is a general one that I'm asking a lot of people and it's what would you like to see more of in the world? Um, I want people, uh, I want people to start with kind hearts more. Um, it's really important to think about yourself. And of course you have to be happy yourself, but as a whole, we are all connected and, you know, being kind doesn't hurt anybody. It will only give the positiveness. And I would like to see more of that from any, any uh, genre of uh, what people are doing. And with a kind heart really, I think that's the only way uh, to bring the peace to the world. It's, it's a big mission, but everybody has purpose uh, being here and everybody should be participating in, in this amazing uh, world. And I'd like to see more of that. Absolutely perfect. I agree with you. Onwards with the mission, Sachiko. <laughs> That's what I want. Thank you. Thank you for a beautiful interview. Thank you so much for having me, really. And all the best for the show. <laughs>